I found myself in a wee bit of a predicament. I started brushing waffle as I do every day because we have a brushing routine. I kind of um, got carried away and I started trimming him. This bitch is raggedy. <laughs> Miss Raggedy Ann. I'm having trouble with the layer, with the, with the, the length, you know, just. We're just gonna give him a treat and then I'm gonna move on. Boy, you are looking raggedy. You look raggedy, sir. Sir. <laughs> You're looking raggedy as hell. Hello everyone. My hair's looking crazy because I just brushed it. Welcome back to another vlog. Um, it's me. I'm here again in my kitchen, like always. <laughs> it's Wednesday. It's a little late. I woke up really early to finish some projects. I actually have a pretty busy day today, but I wanted to start vlogging. I wanted to be me. <laughs> Bitch. Welcome, I'm about to make breakfast. I haven't really been cooking lately. <laughs> Yikes, and I really wanna just cook things today. Yes, ah. okay. I just realized I have things for bacon, egg, and cheese. We're gonna do that, okay? Um, Let's go. I hope you guys are doing well today. I'm gonna use some sourdough. Girl, what the hell? What the fuck? What was that noise? Fun fact, make sure to tell, to, uh, I don't even, what, what the fuck am I saying? How are y'all doing? How have y'all been? I've been well. I've really been on the grind. I have therapy today. That's always a fun time. Having therapy. Butter. Hi, um, it's me again with my brekkie. Coffee this morning is just a lot cologne, draft latte. Some days I just don't wanna make coffee. This is my second one. It's very good. Okay, taste test. Mmm, yum. So this is a vlog, but it's also something, I, I also wanna talk about something. I realized that it's been a little over three years since I dropped out of college. Um, I made this video um, kind of explaining the whole story. So basically, if you wanna know the timeline from when I was like 18 to when I dropped out, go check that out. Um, that'll tell you everything you need to know. Don't, it's a little dramatic. I won't lie, I edited the thumbnail to make it look drama, but it's, the story still holds. I don't know. It's been three years. I've done so much growth. So much learn. Take like a little break. My camera died, and then I had therapy and had to do some work. So we are back. There. Oh my god, I'm gonna throw up. There's a hair on my soup. There's there was a hair on my soup. dumplings <laughs> that I heated up from a, from a frozen packet. And I was gonna eat soup. Before I had to take my little break, um, I'm still thinking about the hair in the soup. I'm sorry. So like I said before, we're gonna be talking about how I dropped out of college and you know, waffle. Oh my God, he's eating paper. Hey, no, come here, come here, no. 
I asked you guys on my socials, what do you want to know four, three, two, three years later? And so I wrote them all down. So we're just going to go through them and talk about them. Okay. So the first question is, how long did you think about dropping out before you did? I legitimately wanted to drop out of college after my first semester, or I went to a school that did the quarter system the first quarter. I never liked school, like literally ever. <laughs> I hated school so much. Like if my senior year of high school, someone said to me, POV, you're my you're my guardian angel. Hey bud, you don't have to go to college to be successful now. You can not go to college and still achieve everything you want. Then it would be a different story. I wouldn't have gone, but because you know, Western society says you have to go to college. If you have the opportunity, you have to go to college. What I'm grateful that I got to go because honestly, a lot of people don't get the chance to go to college, but it, it did t teach me some things, but I just, I probably should not have gone. <laughs> Basically, I never wanted to go, so I always hated school, and I did never, I never wanted to be there. Like, I was happy when classes were canceled. I always was very happy to drop classes, even after paying for them. Like, I fucking hated school, y'all. I hated, hated school. What was your dream job or job expectations when you were in college? Well, my major was entertainment and media studies. And then like, say you go through that program and you graduate, I guess the expected job was to like work as a PA on a, on a movie or a television set. And then you work your way up. So I guess if I like did everything I was supposed to, I would have been a PA and then worked my way up or whatever, or not. Some people stay PAs. I don't know. I don't know what my job expectation were, was. I know a lot of the people in my cohort were like, I'm gonna be a writer, I'm gonna be a director. And they had like this, you know, this, this big inflated ego. But um, I always wanted to do be a YouTuber and make content online. So, so here, here we, we are, are baby. baby. Do you think that higher education is less accommodating for neuro neurodivergent people? Oh, yes. 100%. As someone who has some neurodivergent traits, it's so less accommodating. And it's really hard to get accommodations. Like you have to jump through hoops to like get help. And I noticed the people that struggle a lot in college might be on the neurodivergent spectrum and they don't even know it because they never got like the proper testing and stuff. So there's also that. It's like there's people who struggle so much in college and like don't understand why. I wish universities had access to kids who were like really struggling and like don't really know why and like want to seek further help. Do better you multi-billion dollar universities. Oh, this is a good one. Do you ever have moments of regret or envy towards friends who stayed in school? Honestly, sometimes, like in the beginning I did. Like I have friends who are like managers and like these big companies and like, and, and are like programmers and like coders. And then I'm just like making YouTube videos distorting my face. So um, yeah, a little bit, but I have a really great support system, a really great network of friends who like, are so supportive of what I do and I'm so supportive supportive of them. I think it really all depends on who you surround yourself with. You can definitely be around people who knock your hustle and don't think your job is real, but I have like amazing friends who validate me all the time, so we're good on that one. Is filmmaking approachable after you drop out or is it harder? 90% of people who are in the film industry did not go to college. On the very first day of being in the program, I actually remember, and I'll never forget this, the very first day being in the entertainment and media studies program, one of the professors basically was like, you are at a disadvantage. You are wasting time in school when there are people your same age who have already have three or four years of experience in the industry and you have wasted it in school. I went, bitch, why am I here then? I mean, at the end of the day, he was right. Some people like graduate high school and go straight, go straight into being a PA. Anything you would have done differently slash wish you had, wish you would, Ooh, wish you would have known sooner. Yes, actually. I wish I had the confidence to make a decision before I even went to college. Went to college. To be completely transparent, SCAD was like, I don't think I've ever like publicly talked about. SCAD, which is the, the school I got into right out of high school was literally the only college I got into. I barely had a 3.0 coming out of high school. I had Ds, I had a lot of Cs, I had Bs and some As. I did not have impressive credentials to get into college. This is really embarrassing and I 
literally told myself I would never tell anyone this, but I didn't even get into like the state schools that are supposedly easy to get into. It was the biggest blow to my self-esteem I think I've ever experienced because I was watching all of my friends get into University of Georgia, Georgia Tech, like, and I was like sitting over here not even being able to get into like Georgia State, like a, like a state school. Even like when I was applying to these colleges my senior year, I was like, I don't want to do this. I'm clearly not meant to go to college, but I still did it. Like SCAD was like my saving grace. It was like my last ditch effort or else I probably would have had to go to like a community college, which wasn't bad. But at the time I was like, that means you're dumb and I'm not dumb. I mean, going to community college does not mean you're dumb. I know a lot of really smart people who worked really hard in high school and could have gotten into all these really nice fancy schools, but decided to go to community college to like save a lot of money, live at home and then transfer to a bigger university. Anything I would have done differently is simply not go. <laughs> Do you think college is worth it if you're not going to be a doctor, lawyer, etc.? I think college is worth it if you want to go. If you have the resources and the ability and the want to go, Literally do knitting, do whatever you want in college. There is no wrong way to do it. We're all just gonna die anyways. Go to college, do whatever the fuck you want. Like literally who cares? You could literally be whatever you wanna be. And that is the beauty of this world. And it took me so, so long to realize that you can literally do whatever you want. Like literally like 22 years of taking orders. It finally all blew up in my face when I was in college and I hated it. How do you feel about it now? I've never felt more confident in a decision in my life. By the way, I just wanna say I'm speaking on my, my own experiences. Don't take this video as I need to go to college. Don't take this video as I need to drop out of college. Literally, this is just me speaking on my experiences. It's been about three, almost four years. And today I can say it was the best decision I ever made. It was really painful to make because I, was definitely letting down my parents. The future was so unknown. Like I dropped out and then I started making YouTube videos. That is like the most head ass thing I could have possibly done. But through the years, I've accomplished a lot. I started my own editing business. I've worked for some of the biggest YouTubers on the platform. I do Twitch streaming now. I own a house now. <laughs> that was not on my 2021 bingo card at all. I feel so fulfilled that if I didn't drop out of college, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. When I dropped out, if you would have told me back then, like I would have done all this and I would have done it on my own, I would have literally spat in your face. And there are a lot of times when I forget. I was always someone growing up who like never thought I would amount to literally anything. And the fact that it took me leaving school, something that has always been a hindrance to me. Is that a word? Who knows? Something I always hated, something I always thought I would have to do. It took me making that incredibly hard decision to drop out of college for me to finally be my mo be in my most fullest form. That's beautiful. That is a love story for the ages, babes. My biggest hindrance, like my biggest struggle was my biggest obstacle was always my biggest obstacle was my, wait, what does the word hindrance mean? The one thing though, that's really weird that I will say, this happens a lot less frequently now. I sometimes still have this reoccurring dream that I've had since I dropped out where, so I'm in school and I realize I haven't been to any of my classes in like a month and ad drop week is far behind us. I can't drop any of my classes and I'm going to, going to fail. And I, I'm not panicking. I have that dream at least once a week, I think. Maybe a little less. Even though I'm so secure in my decision, I still have that. And I talked to my therapist about it and she was just like, yeah, sometimes your biggest insecurities manifest real deep in your subconscious. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, I still have that dream. It's like I'm in school. It's like, it's like I can't escape it. <laughs> Even in my dreams. <laughs> but yeah, that is my college update. But before I end this segment, I also wanna say, I am well aware of the extreme privilege I had in dropping out. I was fully supported by my parents at the time. Now I am not, and throughout college I was. My parents were in support of me, and some people don't have that luxury, and they have to have jobs while they're in college, and have to put themselves through college, but I was very lucky to have parents that even though did not agree with my decision, they still helped and supported me until I was able to get back on my feet, which here I am now. And also keep that in mind um, when judging others for either being in school or not being in school, but you're also allowed to not want to go to school. So now back to living my life. Not me acting this out. Hey, 
I'm home from the grocery store. Yes, I went to the grocery store. Uh, Waffy. I got waffles some treats. Why do these low-key smell delicious? It's very sus. Okay, ready? We're gonna see if he likes it. I already know he's gonna like it. <laughs> okay, see ya. Oh my gosh, guys. I don't know if you remember from last year me talking about the oatmeal that I make, but they have it back, the pumpkin chocolate chunk oatmeal cookie mix. So this is actually cookie mix, where you like make cookies out of it, but I put this in oatmeal. I had this in my last vlog, the wine country, chicken salad, making me feel like Martha Stewart or whatever. That was my day today. And now I'm about to stream. I'm doing a late night stream. I'm trying this thing where I do late night streams, where I stream like at eight or nine p.m. Chicken salad. Oh, broken cracker. Oh, broken cracker. Also, go sub to my gaming channel. I put so much content out on there. I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. I never do an outro because I never know when my vlogs are gonna end. So this is a treat. Thanks for coming with me on my day. Love you, bye.